Well, hello, Freedom Church. I'm Pastor Jeremy here, and I'm here with uh, Brian Bailey, a good friend of mine, and I'm going to be talking to him about today. But before I get to Brian, I want to let you all know that I'm excited to be starting a new series here at Freedom Church called We Need to Talk where I'm going to be covering various subjects that are going on in our world, various topics that uh, just when they come up, I just feel like we need to talk. And so I really appreciate Brian being here uh, on the first episode of We Need to Talk. And today's topic is going to be about mental health because that's definitely something we need to talk about. And so, Brian, thanks for being with us today, man. We really appreciate Absolutely. it. Brian, tell us a little bit about yourself, man. Sure, sure. Well, thanks for having me again, Pastor. Um, I'm a, a native of Baltimore City, uh, born and raised West Baltimore, um, um, schools, Baltimore. I'm everything Baltimore. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, after I went away to college, I, um, I never came back to Baltimore. Okay. <laughs> you know, I started providing um, every service that I provided in the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Um, I went to Bowie State University, uh, and then I stayed there for um, the counseling psychology program. Um, and I thought I was going to move into working with children and education. Um, that was my area for quite some time. I opened a nonprofit organization called Positive Nature in Washington, D.C. that provided therapeutic services to children who were diagnosed with serious emotional disorders. Yeah. And um, so that launched in 2000, and I had been doing that for the last 20 years um, before I ran into some challenges in looking at how we were actually providing services and if services were considered quality services. Mm -hmm. And then we rebranded my organization to become a consulting firm to train um, others on how to effectively implement interventions to support children with special needs. Yeah. Um, I was able to come back to Baltimore just recently, about three years ago, and um, provide some direct support and, and work for um, uh, uh, FQHC here in Baltimore City that provides um, a, a holistically based service, uh, mental health, physical health, everywhere from pediatrics to geriatrics to the communities in Baltimore City. So um, yeah. um, welcome back here to Charm City. Very good, yeah. man. Well, we're glad to have you back. And we're definitely you. glad to have you back for this occasion, man. Thank you so much. Now, Brian, you're a licensed, certified professional counselor, LCPC. Yeah. Tell us what that means, man. So, you gave me certified. I love certified. Okay. But the LC is clinical. Oh, clinical. So, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, That's my fine. fault, y'all. It's hey, clinical. It's fine. Okay. You're licensed clinical professional counselor. Um, and depending on what state you're in, what district you're in, it will determine um, those, those letters, those initials. Um, so, and I'm also licensed in Washington, D.C., where I'm a licensed professional counselor, at LPC. Um, but like you said, here is LCPC. Um, and that just identifies that you are not only a mental health clinician, but you are licensed to do so. Yeah, um, awesome. Um, never thought that that would be the track that I would be on. Wasn't part of the plan, um, but that's where I am. <laughs> yeah. And uh, no regrets. That's good, no, man. That's no, that, that that's very good. Thank you for explaining that uh, to us, man. Um, and again, I apologize about the certified. Oh, I love it. I, tell I, don't, you. I don't know all the, the letters and hey, anything. I'm sorry. And they mean, they mean nothing. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know they mean nothing. <laughs> no, it's, it means student loans. Well, it be, <laughs> <laughs> right? Well, it mean, yeah. means a lot to us. It well, enough for us to have you on today. So okay, we really well, appreciate awesome. that, I appreciate man. It. Thank you. Man, Brian, um, I wanted to start off by asking you, because you are LCPC, man, there are a whole bunch of different um, mental health uh, professionals out there. Psychiatrists, sure. psychologists, sure. counselors, therapists. Like, man, help me to wade through all of that. Yeah. Like, um, so, so there's a common thread, right? The okay. common theme in all of that, um, Pastor, is, um, is mental health, right? Okay. Um, is is, is is a form of mental health. But the one that stands apart um, will probably be a psychiatrist. Okay. Because when you think about psychiatry, you got to think about, when we're talking about medication management, we're talking okay. about the brain. Okay. Right? Um, now, everyone is, is, is can absolutely provide um, therapy. But in most cases, it's your psychiatrist who's going to provide, like, medication management mm. so that, you know, there's a diagnosis and, and this is what they're going to provide you to support you and to assist you in um, effectively managing your diagnosis. Now, we look at psychology um, or the psychologist or the licensed counseling professional, um, you know, their focus is not medication. It's really okay. you know, the, the mental health process of, you know, providing you with um, some, some, some avenues 
some some wraparound support um, to building a skill, to building interventions, to look at your issues and goals and objectives and all those things, to kind of create a treatment plan on how we can move you along with some of your mental health challenges. Um, so, you know, your psychologist, your counselor, and, you know, I would be remiss not to mention um, social work. Okay. Um, you know, because, yeah. you know, your L L uh, licensed clinical social workers and our social workers is probably one of the, one of the largest growing mental health teams, you know, okay. in our states. Okay. That everywhere you go, you know, you, you may not find uh, a LCPC in your school system, but you will find a social worker. Okay. Um, even in your Fortune 500 organizations, you still will find a social worker that are all licensed to provide mental health support and, and mental health counseling. Okay. Yeah. All right. So if I'm um, experiencing um, some mental health challenges and I'm mm -hmm. concerned that maybe I may be depressed or maybe I may uh, be over anxious about some things, where would I start? Who, who, who would you suggest that I, I start off seeing with all the health professionals that are available out there? Awesome question. I love it um, because during these times, people often run away from you mm -hmm. know getting mental health support mm -hmm. um, um, because it's still um, in. I know we're in the church atmosphere, but it's still tabooish. Yeah, you know, um, and then from a cultural perspective, it, it doesn't sit in all communities the same way, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So you know, once you have done some self evaluation and some self assessment to. Mm -hmm. to you know when something is not quite, you know, perfect, mm -hmm. not quite right. Mm -hmm. You know, it's always the encouraged that you take advantage of your um, your closest resources, mm -hmm. um, whether you're in Baltimore City, whether you're contacting your um, your uh, um, your employment um, HR departments that usually have like employment assistance programs mm -hmm. um, um, to actually kind of start looking at who can I sit down with because. Although we have a psychologist, we have a, a the mental health clinician, we have a social worker, everyone has their own expertise. Okay. So some individuals focus on family. Right. Some will focus on couples, individuals. So you want to find, you know, what's, wh where are you? Okay. You know, is, uh, is this about depression? Is this about anger? Okay. Is it about grief? Because, you know, um, so I'll use me, for example, um, where I can provide um, mental health support around um, mar premarital counseling, marital counseling, individual, family. Um, I'm, I'm not, my expertise is not grief, although we are all well versed, mm -hmm. um, you know, in all those, you know, perspectives, but grief is not my place. Okay. So at that moment, when I realize that's your challenge, then I'm going to refer you to a mental health clinician that can support you around grief counseling. And there are a lot of organizations that have those primary focuses. So that's the first thing I would say is, listen, mm -hmm. You know, take advantage of your resources, mm -hmm. take advantage of your connections at, your, at, at your, mm -hmm. your job placements. There's also, you know, for those individuals who may have difficulty with insurances or, right. or um, you know, because the fact of the matter is that it could get expensive. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. could get expensive. And a lot of your, 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 your places of employment and with their employee assistance programs could actually provide you with some support that will give you five free counseling sessions. The tough part, yeah. go ahead. Yeah, no, I'm sorry, bro. So I, I just wanted to add, no, I appreciate that. And I, I think that's good. And we often suggest many of those things here at Freedom as well. Um, where should I start though? I mean, if I if I think that, like it, to use your words, everything's not perfect, mm -hmm. right? Something might, uh, it just doesn't feel right. I think I might be experiencing something uh, related to mental health. I, I mean, is that going to see a counselor? Is that going to see a therapist? Do I want to jump right to the psychiatrist? Where, where do I want to start? Absolutely not. You want to start with seeing your counselor. Okay. You want to start with, you know, so you, you don't want to jump right to a psychiatrist. A In fact, though, yeah. once you get to a psychiatrist, that's usually recommended or you'll refer it to them, Okay, I see. Right? Yep. Because a lot of the situations that you're going to face, so let's let's look at it. Let's, let's identify it. Right. Okay. Um, trauma. Okay. 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 So trauma is very huge, right? But right. we have three areas of trauma. You can have acute trauma. That means that's one thing that's happened. Okay. Um, you've experienced something and, and it's been traumatic, yeah. right? Um, but then you can have um, um, chronic trauma. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's been, you know, more than s several times things have happened. Okay. Know? It's been repeated okay. trauma. You've been yeah. in an abusive relationship consistently. You've mm -hmm. been... Uh, whatever the case may be, but right, and then there's complex trauma, mm -hmm. and complex trauma means that you have 
acute and chronic constantly happening mm. that, that you've been abused you've been um, raped you've been assaulted mm -hmm. um you're experiencing grief you have all of those things mm -hmm. right so when you have all those things that are involved then we have to identify um uh your support mm -hmm. that's okay. needed um, okay. um i know in baltimore you have uh, the, the baltimore crisis response team okay. um that's very that's a very good resource mm -hmm. okay um because you can stop there and you can find what fits where you are, yeah. right? And trauma for me may not be trauma for you. Sure, right? sure, sure. My, my, my Park Hikes trauma may not be the North Avenue trauma or the sure. Columbia, Maryland trauma. Sure. Um, so so you, you, know, you have to um, discover, you know, where are you? And it's yeah. a self-assessment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the first person that knows something is going wrong possibly is you. Mm -hmm. And after that, it's going to be your, lo your loved ones, those mm -hmm. who are closest to you. Say, sure. hey, you seem a little different. That you're more irritable. You you know you're more aggressive. Um, there's some more stress. You're not eating the same. You're not sleeping. Patterns have changed. Um, and sometimes those are those significant signs of, um, you know, a p possible um, depression. Mm -hmm. um, and it's based mm -hmm. on the trauma. Mm -hmm. It's based on what yeah. you're going through, yeah. what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so. You know, that, that that's where yeah and i was going to ask you man i mean you really going down my list kind of already I'm but that, no 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 that's good i love it man i love it um uh, let me ask you about that i'm gonna skip down a few questions because i want to ask you about that since you brought it up you talked about this idea of trauma right we've talked about this idea of a little depression and i talked about anxiety a little bit earlier and we talked about if you recognize if you recognize man what are some of the signs that this is going on? Because it's, it, you know, it's not necessarily like a, a a cold or something, right? Where you know, okay, they're sniffling, there's this, that, that. you know, I, I I've had situations personally where you know I I might have felt a little depressed, but I didn't even know it. Somebody else had to tell me. Yeah. So so man, for our, for our people who are watching in, um, who 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 are just wondering about that maybe self diagnosis, right? Uh, not not diagnosis, but that self check, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. Man, what what am I looking for to to say? You know what, I might need to go talk to somebody. That's good, man. That that that's good. Um, great question. Um, you mentioned not being like a coat. Mm -hmm. And and here here's the and I'm glad we just have a conversation, okay. right? Because here's the, the the roller coaster in that. It's kind of like a coat. Okay. Right. Um, you know, when I get a cold. I know that I get a little itch in my throat. Right. And that's how I know it's coming. Right. Some people are going to get sniffles or eyes running or right. coughing, or aching, you know, stuffy head fever so you can rest kind of thing. <laughs> right. 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 Um, but the fact of the matter, when it comes to mental health, mm -hmm. your symptoms are, are maybe different from mine, but, but they will kind of... Here, here's a symptom. Um... You are sad about something, mm -hmm. but in your sadness, you're still able to function, mm -hmm. right? You still get up, you go to work, mm -hmm. you go take your kids to mm -hmm. school or what have you. Mm -hmm. But when it's depression, it impedes your ability for normal functioning, mm -hmm. right? So your symptoms may be you haven't eaten all day Saturday and all day Sunday. Mm -hmm. you, you're not getting out of the bed. Mm -hmm. um, that someone asks you a question and you are so irritated by mm -hmm. it that you know you you respond so aggressively, mm -hmm. right? And it's completely out of your nature, okay. right? So these are some minor mm -hmm. signs to kind of pay mm -hmm. attention to to say, you know, why am I feeling this way? Mm -hmm. um, because we don't want to start. We, we can't dangle around the word depression, right? Right. You know, right. man, I'm depressed. I mean, you yeah. you know, you don't even know what depression is right. until you right. are going through right. depression. Right. That, that's a you know, and that's right. one of the questions I was going to ask you later is how do I know if I'm just sad right now? Yes. Or if it's really depression? But go so, ahead. So 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 a great 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 question again. The the moment that your um, your status, your situation, your your feelings, your thoughts impedes your your mm. basic ability to function mm -hmm. you'll be on sadness okay okay the moment you get into a place where you are recognizing that you are making efforts to distance yourself from things that are enjoyable mm -hmm. the things that are appreciated and mm -hmm. things that are um, that brings you any kind of 
um, you know, enhancement. You mm -hmm. know, if you're trying to distance yourself from that, if you're trying to separate from others, mm -hmm. if you're trying to find that alone time, mm -hmm. if you are getting involved in things to so we're talking about a degree of severity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're all gonna be sad, mm -hmm. right? Whether right. it's me, you, the deacon, right? yeah. At some point yeah, in time, yeah, yeah. there's gonna be some sadness, yeah, right? Yeah. And um, whatever it may be, but but when 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 the deacon's sadness, right, prevents him from um, getting out of the bed and going and taking a shower. Right. And yeah. then, um, you know, you can, you know, in COVID, yeah. you know, sometimes everybody's not <laughs> cleaning every day. But right. when these things impact your, the norm, mm. right, mm. then it's, you need to be mindful of that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and here's the thing. Others will see it as well. Mm -hmm. You know, others will hear it in your tone when your tone changes. Mm -hmm. And those kind of things will reveal themselves. Yeah, yeah, that's good. No, I appreciate you for uh, giving us uh, uh, several different uh, looks at that and, and, and where uh, we might need to uh, check in at least, mm -hmm. uh, consult a counselor or something of that nature. Let, let me ask you this, um, Brian, because I want to back up. Uh, we kind of got real practical real fast, but I want to back up to something. No, no, that's good, man. I appreciate that. I want to back up to something that, um, you know, has really stood out to me is that you know, it seems like more and more people are experiencing health challenges than uh, maybe even when we were growing up, right? Um, and I'm just wondering, is that because we just hear about it more? Do you think more people are just talking about it more? Uh, do you think it's now just got to a point where, man, we got to deal with this. We can't we can't put it under the rug. Why do you think that is? That that it or or. or is it even different? Has it even changed? We're just we're just seeing it more with all the connectivity, with social media, the news, the TV, all that. What do you think's going on with that? That's another great question, Pastor. Um, when I when when I went to college, I wanted to be a police officer. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be a homicide detective. Okay. Because I wanted to wear fancy suits and look cool <laughs> and, and answer the yeah. you know, you know, fix the problem. And I realized I, I have an issue with seeing a lot of blood. Mm, <laughs> I, didn't, okay. I didn't realize that I have to go to the scenes, right? Yeah. And and then when I started working in, in my field and I worked with children and I worked in the school system and open organization, I, I started to really love counseling. Yeah. It was not a huge that wasn't the place you go, you know, to to be, to find your career. Okay. Like you know like I want to be a counselor, mm -hmm. right? Um because it wasn't popular. Mm -hmm. Here's the sad part about my field. It's now popular. Mm -hmm. okay. Mental health is huge. Mm -hmm. And and is real. Mm -hmm. This is this is you know, and you know, and the reason that it's growing the way it is, one thing is, you know, the, the gift and the curse is our social media. Mm -hmm. You know, is access. Mm -hmm. You know, that we constantly see it and we're mm -hmm. hearing it. And and it's easy for us to find our issue in the midst of everybody else's issue. Okay. Oh, that's what I'm feeling. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's what I'm going through. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I've experienced that same thing. I must have this. Mm -hmm. Let me Google it. Mm -hmm. okay. Right? Yeah. Right? Dr. Google. Dr. Google, yep, right? Yep, yep. And, uh, you know, I have uh, one of my buddies always tell me, Google is your friend. Right? right. He goes to Google right. for everything. But, you know, um, there was a 20 year um, research called ACES. Okay. Um, ACE, and it stands for Adverse Childhood Experiences. Okay. Right? And and what they discovered in this in this history is that what you go through and in, in your childhood and traumas that you can experience, they discovered that it now impacts you in your adulthood physically. Wow. That it wow. impacts the chemical flow in your body that heightens um, high cholesterol, um, heart disease, stroke, wow. diabetes, and, and, and they discovered this based on how we adjust our own chemicals in our bodies based on the trauma we may experience, yeah. 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 right? So with that, we're looking at all the things that are occurring around mental health and, um, you know, it, it, mental health one time had a black eye. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. um, wherever you were, whether you're in church or in, in, out in the field, you had a black guy. Don't you don't do that's the shrink. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh, he's crazy. Right. Right. You know. Um, but the fact of the matter is, is is your dentist crazy? 
When you go to your dentist, does it make you crazy? Right. Right? Because right. you go for dental hygiene? Right. Or when you go see a doctor, mm -hmm. right? Is that making you crazy right. because you're going to see your doctor about your high blood pressure? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, is there a problem there? No, right. because it's hygiene. Right. It's the same thing mentally. Yeah. We have to be mindful of our mental health. Yeah. Right? right. Because it has such an impact on so many other things. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Let me ask you this, man. As if we already didn't have enough going on here in 2020, before 2020, right? Uh, 2020 just seemed like it's a lot been going on for all of us, right? It's just been a lot tougher for all of us. Uh, a lot going on in our world right now with the COVID, social distancing, protesting, mm -hmm. uh, the division over political stuff and everything. Man, how does all of that play into mental health? Uh, this is good. This yeah. is good. This is good. Um, it's almost too much. Mm. Mm. Right, it's too much, man, and, and and that just becomes stressful by itself. Yeah, yeah. You know, with 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 everything um, that's going on. So so, can I take the gloves off for a second? Take the gloves off. Okay, so I'm a black man. Right. And I'm a clinician. Right. But when I get inundated with social media, the news, and I keep seeing. Um, there's another black man or woman who's been killed by the police or, um, you know, we look at social injustices and the disparities. And if we keep seeing it, keep seeing it, mm. keep seeing it, keep seeing it, mm -hmm. it starts to build something in us. Mm. Okay. Right? Um, um, there's something called, um, you, you have what's, what people don't pay attention to, but it's the, it's the biopsychosocial model. Okay. Right? And the biopsychosocial model talks about your biology, mm -hmm. physical, mm -hmm. right, your psyche, mm -hmm. mental, you know, and, and the social, okay. you know, um, how, how you engage others. Because so much is going on, mm -hmm. and we see it all the time, it's only natural mm -hmm. that it impacts you. Yeah. You know, that, that you, you start to build an anger. Yeah. You know, even sometimes a resentment, mm -hmm. you know. Um, Maybe others don't understand that when you're in the car and the police drives behind you, you automatically get some anxiety. Mm. You're a pastor. Yeah. This is the deacon. You, you, you've done nothing wrong, right? You've mm. done nothing. You're going to work. Yeah. You're coming to share the word of God, mm -hmm. right? Um, and, and you haven't been a thug for 40 years, <laughs> right? So, but but what happens is. On your way, a police officer pulls behind you, mm -hmm. you notice them, mm -hmm. um, and then on the rest of the ride, you look in your rearview mirror a couple of times to see if he's still there. Mm -hmm. And then if he's still there, you make sure you do nothing that could trigger mm -hmm. an opportunity for them to pull you over. Mm -hmm. Not because you are afraid of the, the moving violation. Mm -hmm but because you're afraid you may not live after the encounter. Mm, mm. That's anxiety provoking. Mm. That impacts your, your mental health, mm. right? Mm -hmm. A lot of these things that we see in 2020 that's happening um, starts to pour into our stress bowl. Mm -hmm. Sometimes our stress bowl is manageable. Okay. But when you keep pouring into it, mm -hmm. it becomes overwhelming and it impacts everything you mm -hmm. do say and how you respond. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it's, a, it's a tough time. Yeah. It's a tough time and we're yeah. trying to find our peace. Yeah. yeah. So let me ask you this. Listen, let, let, for the sake of our mental health, do you suggest that uh, everyone who's struggling with these things, everyone who's feeling some anger over these things, go consult a mental health person to talk? Is there a step we can take before then to kind of mitigate and talk about some of these things before they reach a reach a fever pitch with us? I mean, if I, if I for instance, if I, let's use your example, if I keep seeing these uh, traumatic incidences, right? Uh, uh, we saw Albury and, and, and uh, George Floyd and, and Breonna Taylor and so forth. And we keep seeing this and, and that, that builds up that well. You know, at what point in time that, hey, I can just talk about this with my friends and kind of get stuff off my chest. And then when does it come to, nah, I probably need to talk to someone, really go see a professional about this. So, um, man, I think you're, you're overloaded with great questions mm. and, great, and great great conversation about this. 
and that's where that's where it is. It's, it's about the conversation, mm -hmm. right? That we can't continue to live in our silos, mm -hmm. right? It's not just you have the conversation with your wife and your children. Or, mm -hmm. Um, it's bigger than that. Mm -hmm. I mean, th this is a perfect example mm -hmm. of how you're creating a platform mm -hmm. for open discussion. Yeah. Right. So that you know, um, it's it's the barbershop talk. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. is is we need to be able to hear one another yeah. and not be afraid of the tear. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, mm -hmm. it's like I'm afraid. I'm scared. You know, um, one of one of one of my my professors from uh, from Dallas. Um, Awesome guy, man. Uh, uh, you know, just just an awesome guy. White guy who is committed to, mm -hmm. you know, learning more about cultures. Um, he's always, you know, asking about whether it's, it's white privilege or fragility or whatever else the case may be. And I'm not trying to harp on, you know, culture and diversity. But what I'm saying is that when we are together, mm -hmm. he is serious about what he's not going to tolerate mm. if it if it occurs. Mm -hmm. And I'm serious about, I need you not to be that person. Okay. Because when this <laughs> ends, yeah. it doesn't look good for me. Right, right. You're right. going to walk away. Right. Right? So those are my anxieties. And, yeah. and, and, and that's his anxiety, but I need to have that conversation with him. I see, yeah. So where, we, where, we, where we're going to find some of our solaces is that mm -hmm. yeah. we have to open up first resources. Yes. Yeah. You know, we have to be able to share, hey, you should contact the Baltimore Crisis Response okay. Team. They have a plethora of counselors you can yeah. speak to. Um, we should open up another platform just like this where people can hear and speak to one another. We need to have support groups yeah. um, for, you know, for our women, for our children. Yeah. Um, you know, it's a different time. It's a different yeah. age. And if we're not talking about it, we're going to run into a jam. And so if I'm hearing you correctly, I mean, obviously we know... Um, Man, you know, we have um, licensed professionals and we have health, mental health professionals that can help us uh, with these things. But if I'm hearing you correctly, man, I can just start by having conversations with those around me and just start sharing these things and bouncing these things off. How I'm feeling about certain things, whether it's COVID, protesting, sure. injustices, whatever. I can just start having those conversations yeah. first. Yeah. And, and that that in part plays a role in my mental health and mental well-being as well. Yeah, that yeah, is it. That's cool. That that's is cool. it. That's yeah. that, I mean... Yeah. Think, think about when you have conversations with fellow fellow yeah. pastors and ministers yeah. and you're just talking about one scripture, yeah, right? And it just opened up so many other things uh -huh. and how it benefits and supports yeah. and helps you. Yeah. It's the same thing. You know, yeah. We, yeah. We, we, the weakness comes from isolation. Yeah, yeah. So, Brian, let me, let me stick there one second because that's another huge one, right? Um, there, there's somewhat of an isolation going on, right? Sure. Uh, it's, uh, it's different in all over the country, depending on what your restrictions are. But we've got this uh, six feet mask, so forth and so on. We're not shaking hands. We're not hugging. We're not coming into contact with each other the same way we used to. So, man, how, how do I keep from being isolated? You know, because I might pick up the phone and call you, but that's not the same as yeah. seeing you. Man. Like, so so what, what would you suggest? Man, how can I still get a sense of kind of like... Just having those conversations with people in a way that's beneficial for me, or is Zoom helpful? Is 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 the phone just as helpful as being in person when it comes to having those type of conversations? I guess what I'm asking is: Is it more important to have the conversation than how the conversation is had? Ooh, <laughs> mm -hmm. ooh, Pastor. Um, I'm just asking. Yeah, that's 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 good. Um, I'm trying to stay away from being you know politically appropriate. Mm -hmm. Right, because um, the truth of it is, we are social people. Right, right. It's just natural. Right. You know, when 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 I see you, I, I'm, right. I'm gonna put my hand in your hand, put right. my arms around you. Right. You know, um, that's just natural, and and we we're losing that. Yeah, we are. Right, we're losing that. Yeah. That could be a major problem. Yeah. Um, you know, we need hugs and the movie theater. You know. Um, I look forward to going to the movie theater and when my wife and I are early and somebody comes to sit by me, I tell my wife, this is my own rest. Yeah. I was here yeah. and I'm ready to fight the guy for yeah. it. That's social engagement. Yeah. Believe it or not, right? Yeah. yeah. So whether it's conflict is negative or positive, conflict is healthy. Right. Right? Um, so our the tough part is Zoom, WebEx. It was great. Three months ago, right, right, right. right it was right, a thing right, to do, right, right. 
everybody's on Zoom, we're right. doing interviews, but then there's a thing called digital burnout. Yep. Yeah. If your position has you in a Zoom conference every day, six hours a day, mm -hmm. and then I come out of that, and then I need to join, you know, the pastor for Bible study on Wednesday night in Zoom, mm -hmm. and then, you know, the, the, the pastor's talk on Saturday morning, and then service on Sunday, and then go back to work in the Zoom and WebEx, I'm done. Yeah. I'm yeah. burnt out. Yeah. I really want to have a cookout, some burgers, and throw some <laughs> balloons, and you know. So, right. so let's be just be just be mindful that, you know, it's a it's a it's a pro and a con there. Yeah. You know. Yeah. So, I would urge and encourage individuals to um, still utilize the Zoom, but open it up in a non-traditional format. Mm -hmm. It's engaging. Mm -hmm. It's not, um, and that's why I'm so happy you said let's have a conversation. Yeah. Because it's not just me talking to people and you know so let's look at the dsm-5 diagnosis and right. remember that this man, nobody's doing that right right um because that's not real right what's real is is the deacon gonna say hey did you fix your collar on your shirt before the cameras came right. on right what's real is you're gonna say yeah. you know nobody knows that when we started you had to say hello three different times right right, right. right. but that's real right. right and that's who we are that's who we are you know and so you and know, they know that and y'all know that now by the way because yeah because i told it yeah exactly. i figured exactly. out a way to tell exactly exactly yeah. so hey man um I, I i really appreciate your time before i let you go today man i just got a couple questions um these questions actually came from people in the congregation sure. and so i want to make sure that i ask them uh from their behalf man because i i think these are some really good questions um one person asked what can christians do to help friends or family who may be struggling with mental health challenges but are not currently seeking any help for it i see somebody a church member a friend uh, a family member and I can tell, again, using those words you used earlier, everything's not perfect, right? Some is not, some is different, right? Irritability, yeah. sadness, whatever it yeah. is. Man, how, how do I, how, how do I help them? How can I help them? I mean, obviously in the church, we would say we pray for them, right? Yeah. Uh, um, and encouraging words and things like that. But how can I help them? So, so let me, let me throw it back at you. How else do you currently help them? Yeah. I mean, when they come to you right now, what do you do? Yeah. So as a pastor, sure. I, I have a benefit because a lot of people come and they'll tell me, yeah. hey, this is my problem. Yeah. right? This is what I'm going through. Right. And then, yeah, it's all what you said, the assessment. OK, is this a biblical, spiritual issue we can just deal with? Is this something where we need to break, may need to consult a counselor, bring them in or other people that may be able to help? Yeah. But, man, you know, a lot of people in the congregation, people are not walking up saying this is my problem. Matter of fact, you know. We get the, hey, how you doing? Oh, I'm fine. How are you? And then we go around, we walk away with our heads still down. Less than highly favored. Yeah. So if a person's not going to open up to me like they are going to open up to a pastor or a deacon or a ministry leader, man, what 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 resources do I have? What what so, can I do? So let's 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 use the movie theater again. Mm -hmm. When you go see a movie, back when we could go see movies, mm -hmm. um, before the movie starts, what do you usually see? Uh, advertisements of what uh, food and stuff like that sure right right, right. and then after that's over you, you're gonna get something else you gonna get a couple of maybe three other previews right of some other movies. of some other movies right right, right? right right without them you're not even gonna go see the movie because right. you never heard of it right right right, right. It's the same thing around mental health. Mm. We have to provide our church family mm -hmm. previews mm -hmm. of the things that they could mm -hmm. benefit from in the future. Mm. Okay, I see. Right? Yeah. So, so whether we have in the front foyer of the church a list of resources, mm -hmm. a list of counseling support services, mm -hmm. a list of, of, of um, support groups. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes it doesn't take a therapist. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it just takes a support group. Mm -hmm. That grief group. That's good. That that Brother Jones lost his son. Sister McIntyre lost her son. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Sister Tracy lost her husband. Mm -hmm. We need a support grief group, mm -hmm. right? So that people, we're not trying to fix you. Mm -hmm. You know, because healing is a process. Yeah. We just want to give you an opportunity to share your sore. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Um, because part of your healing process is to recognize that, oh, somebody else has the same sore that I have. Yeah. So, yeah. So, it would be how we providing resources 
Um, is it available? Mm -hmm. It's not enough to just know, oh, you can contact so and so and so and so. Mm -hmm. um, I used to do a training about um, domestic violence. Okay. And in the domestic violence class, before I ever start the presentation, I would make everybody take out a pen and a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. And I'll make everybody write down a number to the support hotline. Mm -hmm. And it didn't matter if you were abused, neglected, or not. But I made everybody write the number down, hold it up, mm -hmm. show me that they've written it down, mm -hmm. fold it up, put it in their purse or in their pocket, mm -hmm. and then I would start again. Mm -hmm. right? Okay. Because it created a comfort place. Yeah. <clears throat> No matter who you are, you don't have to share, you don't have to tell. You have the number now. Mm, that's good. Right? That's so, good. you know, if we can just provide them some resources, yeah. create more platforms for some support groups, yeah. we'll see the difference. That's good. Appreciate that, man. Um, you kind of touched on this earlier, but I want to come back to it. Okay. What would you say to someone who thinks that seeing a mental health specialist mm -hmm. goes against faith? You know, I, I've even heard people say, even the medicine, right? That, that that's not trusting God, right? Um, and so obviously we know better than that. But what what would you say as a as a um, LCPC to that person who says, man, to go see a mental health specialist uh, and definitely a psychiatrist and get on man, that just goes against my faith. Or that, not that it goes against their faith, but it goes against the Christian faith. Yeah, right. I get it. I get it. So you you put me in a tough position, Pastor. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because you know. It's my it's my profession yeah. and my faith. Yeah. Right? You right. Know, I'm a minister of the gospel. Um, so I would say I would go back to the example I gave you. Mm -hmm. You know, if if that person broke their leg, mm -hmm. right, would you tell them don't go to the hospital? Mm. That's challenging your faith. Yeah, that's good. Have faith that's that good. God is going to heal your broken leg. That's good. You know, or your mangled foot. Yeah. No, you're going to rush them to the hospital and tell them to get a cast on it immediately and then put them in physical therapy. Yeah, yeah. It's the same thing when it comes to our mental stability. Yeah, yeah. You know, That's good. Uh, when we're hurt, man, we are hurt and we need support. Yeah. Um, because I am a counseling psychologist, medication is the last thing on my list sure, for me. Sure, sure. Because I'm always, I always want to give you a coping mechanism mm -hmm. or a skill to help you manage through that. Sure. Once we get to a certain place where we realize that there is a diagnosis and a psychotropic drug is needed, mm -hmm. you may have to lean to that to give you some support, to give you yeah. the boost. Yeah. But the, 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 you know, the fact of the matter is mental health is real. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Hey, man, we're running short on time, so I just want to kick just a couple more questions to you, and then we're going to get out of here, man. Um, uh, this is one I, I, I have to ask because th this one uh, came from somebody very near and dear to me. Yeah. And so I got to ask this question. Uh, what do you say to people uh, to help them see, or what can you say to people to help them see their uh, need for counseling, especially for like the older generation? You know, um, perhaps there are some older adults who've lived their life. They, they, you know, hey, you know, it's been working for me. It's got me this far. But we recognize that, hey, you know, you, it might be good for you to go talk to somebody. And then, nope, nope, nope. I don't need to talk to anybody. I'm good. This has been working for me for 50, 60, 70, 80 years. Why do I need to see somebody now? What, what, what kind of advice would you give to help them uh, see the need? Is it the same thing you said about the resources? or? Yeah, yeah. Okay. All, all you can do is provide opportunities for those individuals to see it. Okay. You know, um, they got to do some self-evaluation, self-assessment. But it's hard yeah. to provide mental health support for someone who does not want it yeah you know um, yeah. Or, or who are fighting it you know yeah. and a lot of those support groups will help people cope and come come along and they'll realize it later on down the road but you know it, it's a two-way street is you know I, I need your help yeah i can't support you if you i need you to show up yeah you know um and then you know you you have to be open okay to to, to hear it so i will continue yeah. to provide that person with the resources and opportunities Sounds good. And my last question for you today, man, because this this is this is a good one, I think. Is there a balance, or what is the balance when it comes to showing a person with mental health challenges grace? Like, how do I know when it's time to ease up and when it's time to show tough love? You know, hmm. does that make sense? It makes a lot of yeah. sense, man. Yeah. Um, so, what what's your position in the church? Lead pastor. You lead pastor. And what's his position in the church? Deacon. 
Deacon Brand is recording for us, by the way, guys. So that's why he keeps that's why I keep pointing. That's why I keep pointing to the I'm, deacon. I'm, so I'm sorry. You all know that now. That's right, the mystery right, deacon. Right. <laughs> so I'm, I'm saying, know your role. Yeah. Know your role, right? Okay. The deacon is not trying to be the pastor. He's not preparing his sermon mm -hmm. on Sunday, mm -hmm. right? Um, not that he's not being trained to or what have you. Same for you. You're not doing the deacon's responsibility. Know your role. Right. Know right. your job. So many times when we, our job in the church is to always provide compassion mm -hmm. and grace. Mm -hmm. And we got to be careful of this thing called tough love. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite theorists of all times is a, a, man, a man by the name of Albert Ellis. Okay. And he has what's called the rational emotive therapy. Okay. And his, his theory in this process is real in your face. Mm -hmm. If you come in here and you come into a session and he said, and you said, man, I'm sick of life. I'm going to kill myself. Mm -hmm. He may say, I got another session in an hour. Mm -hmm. So if you want to do that, go do that so I can get my other session in. And if you want to work on changing, then come on and sit down. Right, right. Now, he doesn't say that to everybody. Mm -hmm. He knows his clients. Mm -hmm. He knows that this is the dramatic failed person that's just having a, a tantrum right now. Mm -hmm. They have no plan of suicide. Mm -hmm. They don't have a history of suicidal ideation. They're not going to kill themselves. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't tell this pastor to do the same thing because you're not you're not versed in psychosomatics. <laughs> this right, is not your right, thing. Right. And then you tell right. somebody that, and then yeah, it's bad gonna, things can happen. Bad yeah. things happen. Yeah. So it will be always in care. You always show grace. Yeah. You always show compassion. Absolutely. You always show love. And when you're not in your lane, yeah. you give it to somebody else who drives in that way. Mm, that's and, good. and then you leave them be. That's good. Um, that, that, that's, that's, that, that's my greatest. That's good. You know, tough love can be dangerous at times. Yeah. You know, um, and you should balance it. Yeah. You should balance it. <clears throat> but be very careful. Yeah. Man, Brian, I really appreciate your time, man. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today. I know I've learned a lot, and I'm pretty sure that our viewers will have learned a lot as oh, well. So man, this was so good, and I feel like the time just went by so fast. We're going to have to have you back at some point in time in the future, man. We look forward to that. But in the meantime, thank you for coming by for this first, this very first episode of We Need to Talk. Outstanding job, man. We really appreciate you. Thank you for having me. And for those of you who are watching, just want to say thank you for uh, tuning in. Uh, stay tuned for this and more episodes of We Need to Talk with Pastor Jeremy. Grace and peace.